Make it so, number one. Right, and we are back with a Joshless episode of Talking Smack, so that's the sigh of relief you can hear from my co-host this week, which includes Matt. Hey, I'm a big sigh of relief. <laughs> and from Voluntary Input and that beautiful music you just heard, we have Leo Allen. How's it going, guys? Really good, really good. good. How you doing, man? Doing good. Joshless, that almost sounds like you're trying to say something like pantsless. Or something. <laughs> like we're flying by the seat of no pants. Yeah, when we don't have Josh here, you know, we have a we have a time window. We don't need, we don't have Josh here to like keep us in line. I don't know what's Uh-oh. gonna happen, man. Uh oh. <laughs> well, the reason why I brought you both on is I heard the franchise fatigue episode. You guys were talking Star Trek so much. The third episode of Picard just ended, and I felt like we could just talk star trek for a little while finally it's my time <laughs> <laughs> but before we do that this week we'd lo- like to offer our support to sugar-coated murder so we'll be right back after this brief ad bump hey ann Barner. hey karen Bain. we need a promo you know like where we talk about what we do on our podcast on our sugar-coated murder podcast like how we love to bake and talk about murder that's what we need to talk about there you go i think we've talked about it y'all find us on all your favorite listening apps stay sweet and don't murder because if you kill people we will talk about you (laughs) i love that promo by the way (laughs) i love those ladies i was on their show before and uh I baked with them. Oh, would you make? It was a good time. Uh, no bake cookies. <laughs> <laughs> they are so fun. They are very fun. It, it just, it sounds so charming. It's like, I, I like watching Hallmark Mysteries. And that's exactly the warm feeling that promo gives me is that just kind of like, <laughs> mm, like this is like, I, the, it, I can just feel the stress leaving my body just listening to that. (laughs) And they're those kinds of of ladies. They're genuinely that nice. Like, you know, from the interactions I've had with them, they are genuinely, genuinely that nice. So. Awesome. Well, Matt and Leo, we're here to talk Star Trek. Now, as you both know, but I'm, I'm sure that a lot of our listening audience does not know. Star Trek was started in 1966 by Gene Roddenberry and Lucille Ball of I Love Lucy famously uh, stepped in with her Lucy uh, Lucy Lou um, production company, sorry, Desi Lou production company, and made it happen because no one wanted to do the show. Because of that, it was infamous, infamously low budget. <laughs> and only lasted about three years. It was actually apparently was supposed to be canceled twice during that three year run once during the second season, but there was an ad yeah. campaign fan campaign to keep it going. And then in the third season, they're just like, we're done. You're yeah. Your guys are gone. It went into syndication because syndication was starting at that time before then basically you aired a show and they didn't rerun it because of that. It got a new audience. They actually started some of the first fan conventions there's actually a very good episode of um, Netflix's uh, The Toys That Made Us about Star Trek toys that yeah. goes into a lot yeah. of the history. That is enlightening that while Star, while Star Wars basically thrived by making toys, Star Trek survived because of toys. <laughs> yeah. And it's crazy that, yeah, it was technically perceived as a flop. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But – and you were talking about that low budget quality. That's part of its charm. That was always yeah. part of its charm was even now I can't say I watched that one as they were new, but I watched a lot of them, you know, during the seventies and eighties when they were still making their heavy run. Uh, my oldest brother, he loved Star Trek. He was, he was old enough that he saw them when they were new. So he just basically passed them down, (laughs) if you will. And he would talk about that because 
and and we may get into this later because people love to point out a lot of that technology from the original show on into next generation it's like they were making predictions of things to come mm -hmm. and we see a lot of the similar similar technology now thanks to star trek yeah yeah like one of the ones i can think of is that uh picard was always in his office with his tablet yep oh, and yeah. and his action figure came with like a tablet and a phaser i think and i know one of my cousins had the tablet like it didn't do anything it was just a cheap no, piece man. of plastic that was you know yay big with like this stuff on it but i remember him like having it and now of course yeah, and no, we've all got tablets. The one thing they didn't get is that if you had a bunch of documents to read, that meant a stack of tablets on your <laughs> yep. desk as opposed to as opposed to just having it all. Yeah. Well, because the idea was that um, they they weren't individual documents; they were basically books. Yeah, right. And each book was a slate, so yeah. you would still have a library of slates. Yeah, as <laughs> instead to, of one yeah. tablet with everything. Yeah. <laughs> So Star Trek kind of got brought back in with the animated series that ran for about two episodes. And from what I understand, I'm sorry, sorry, two seasons. And from what I understand, basically has been just canonically just thrown out. I, I know they've referenced some stuff occasionally, but. Did you guys even watch any? Have you ever watched any of those? I've seen some episodes. I've, I've seen a couple of seen some episodes. And what, what did you take away from them? Uh, it's very, it's a very 1970s animated series. <laughs> You know, I grew up yeah. I, very Hanna Barbera ish. Yeah, yeah I grew yeah. up. I was, you know, born in the eighties and nineties when like Cartoon Network was a big thing. So I watched tons of those shows in like the middle of the night when they would like. It's the middle of the night. We're showing all these forgotten cartoons and showing Flintstones and whatever, and like it's the same. You know, the kind of cheap animation, very, very limited movements we're trying to save as much money as possible so like every act every voice actor is doing triple duty you mm -hmm. know maybe it's yeah this scene is just these guys mouths are moving it was a i was about to say that it was a bunch of stills with yeah, uh, yeah. mouth animation yeah it, it reminds me of um re-watching the 90s fox spider-man where it's like, <laughs> why does he always swing in from that side? Why is it always a close up of his spider thing? The thing yep. and how much just animation just recycled and recycled, yep. you know? Oh, my favorite. I'm sorry. I'm a, we're going to go off on that. We're going to go <laughs> off the rails for a second. Speaking of Spider Man, even before then, though, the older Spider Man cartoon, which I loved, whenever he would use his webs it was the same scene mm -hmm. over and over again whenever yeah. he had to get anywhere it was just that same scene of him shooting his webs into infinity yep. in yep. new york the new york city is just scrolling across in the background it's like first of all where's our where are his webs yeah. connecting well and his, and like <laughs> his whole body like his chest doesn't have the webbing because nope it was too yeah. you know it's too busy for that kind of animation <laughs> so. yeah you just needed him to be red and yeah. red and whatever <laughs> so. but anyway star trek <laughs> so 10 years after being canceled star trek comes back mostly because they were able to pitch that hey listen space is big right now star wars just made a ton of money um closer encounters just made a ton of money you know they're starting to gear up to do Battlestar galactica and stuff like that on tv so we got we got the crew back. We got a movie. Not very good. <laughs> but then we got Wrath of Khan. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. Wait, you like the first movie? Whoa. Time out on the play. There's a penalty on the play. <laughs> oh. First of all, first of all, you had you the thing is you kind of had to be there. It's one of those okay. things you kind of had to be there. I'm not gonna try, I'm not gonna say that it was the best Star Trek movie, but when that movie came out. And what they did and that story, it was phenomenal. Feature? Yeah. Come on, man. Well, I, you, if you don't, if you didn't understand, because it part of the, the the beauty of that movie was them figuring out what the heck was Viger. And then to find out what it was at the end. And a lot of that, so and I'm sure we'll get into this later. One thing that drives me crazy about I love a lot of the new Star Trek. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. I love a lot of new sci-fi. But when you start writing stories about time, 
that's when your stories will start to fall apart, in my opinion. V'ger, it was almost like they were saying, this is kind of dealing with time. However, it was real time. This was a space probe that we actually sent out and they didn't find it until what century? Yeah. And yeah. then they didn't even know what it was because it had evolved to become what it was. Everybody loves to say Wrath of Khan. Yeah, that's a great, a great installment. Funny thing is, some of those people who loved Wrath of Khan didn't even know about uh, Khan yeah. from the original until they did some backtracking and right. researching. That's At least with the first Star Trek, the motion picture, everyone knew what they were talking about when we got to the end. Like, oh, Voyager, the Voyager. And at the time, talk about the Voyager spacecraft was still, it was still popular because that was yeah. one thing that was still going on. You know, we're the whole NASA space missions, you know, that, that time during the 80s, it's like, yeah, you know, there was heightened interest in that. How about make a movie? What happens if we find those spacecraft centuries later? Yeah. All right. I... Yeah really like the first one it's a yes. beautiful movie i i caught it um i saw it for the first time in theaters i want to say it was like 2018 or 2019 there was back in theaters for some anniversary oh here you go again uh, <laughs> um, i told you about this the last time i talked with you <laughs> um, go ahead i'm sorry <laughs> well, i mean it's like i i didn't think the movie was great i appreciate like the you had to be there thing but it's it's a gorgeous movie you know like Everybody mm -hmm. makes fun of the thing where they spend five minutes like looking at the Enterprise as they approach it, but that those scenes look so good that you understand like why it's in there. Even if it's like, oh, it's minute four, I'm checking my watch, but you're like, it looks great though. Plus, people who saw this movie later, like you did in 2018, you got to remember why that was such a significant shot. Yeah. Do you know how they did that shot? No. It's something they never do anymore. Those were, it was models. Yeah. That was hand built, handcrafted models, lit properly, angles. All of the cinematog cinematography had to come together just right to make it look realistic. Now everything's CGI, which still yeah. looks great. But the skill that went into that, and not to mention when that movie hit theaters, there was, the, it was, it was relatively new. Because at that time, yeah, we already had other space odysseys, you know, you know, we got Star Wars with the models and everything, but the way they shot it, the type of cinema scope they used, everything was ramped up a bit. Yeah. So when that movie came out and I saw it when it came out in theaters, the sound was new. It was, it was gorgeous. Yeah. I'm gonna have to give it a, give it another watch. Cause admittedly, I haven't watched it since like once, 20 years ago, something like that. Yeah. My kids, it's it's funny, my kids, especially my two teenage sons, I show them things that, and you guys will go through this later in life if you have kids, and I say, oh, you guys got to check this movie out, it's great, and they'll be like, oh my gosh, look at the quality, you know, <laughs> this looks corny, this, this yeah. and that and that, and I tell them all the time, and they, and I tell them, you guys have pissed me off, because <laughs> you, you're making me say something that my dad used to say, and I said I would never say it to my kids, but I said to them, Wait until you get older <laughs> and you have kids and you have them watch the Avengers. Yeah. Listen to what they say <laughs> about how that looks. <laughs> and you're going to be like, you guys are crazy. This was the best movie ever. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Well, okay. That, that movie is actually a pretty great example of like, when I was growing up was someone who would say, I don't, I don't like Star Trek. I'm not a fan of Star Trek. Because whenever I would see an episode of like next gen on TV or whatever, I'd be like, they're sitting around talking like where's like this where's the lasers where's the space battles so like uh. you know it was a thing where that movie is like the perfect example of like what is is interesting about star trek but that like as a kid i had no conception of like it was it's a bunch of people sitting around like talking things are moving slowly things are like methodical and i'm like are you going to like pull out your fucking lightsaber or what, man? <laughs> like <laughs> Now, yeah. when you say next generation and you say you were a kid about how old were we talking about here? Well, I was born in 86. So, you know, that, that show starts in what? 89, 87, yeah. 87. Yes. 87. Right. right so yeah. 
you know, unless I was seeing reruns, which is possible, you know, we're probably talking like 92, 93, like probably even near the end of its run, um, that I might have been seeing these things and like thinking about whether or not I liked them. Because before that, I would have just been like barely. So you were about what, eight? Eight years old? Nine? Yeah, that sounds right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Because I asked that because I was about to say, um, Deanna Latroy, because uh, you said you couldn't figure out what was interesting. I'm like, well, if you didn't figure, I get it. If you didn't yeah, see anything else it. but her. No, well, here's the thing. Here's the thing. That's an interesting. But that's, if you're eight or nine, I get. That's it. an interesting point because until probably like 2018, maybe 2017, I would have still said I'm not really a Star Trek guy. However, I watched several seasons of star trek voyager when i was a, a, i wonder why <laughs> yeah when i was like about a preteen so you guys could put together some of no, maybe some I'm, of the reasons I, this is the here here it is i knew this was going to happen this is where we're going to butt heads matt but go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> um, that, that's it you know we, you could put together why i might have been drawn to that show <laughs> in like you know when i'm maybe a junior high age um yeah. so you can kind of guess maybe why that might be so um we got a few movies in the 80s and then <laughs> in 87 we got the next generation yeah a little thereafter we got some crossover movies we started getting deep space nine we got voyager or was voyager first and then deep space nine deep it space was voyager nine. first no no no, no. Okay. no. deep space I nine thought... because there's two seasons where they like sometimes cross over with tng and then, yeah, okay, you might be right. And then yeah, Deep Space Nine is ninety three, Voyager's ninety five. That is when I hit my stride of liking Star Trek. Was that good eating nineties next generation stuff? Still, still the peak. I have vague memories of watching Star Trek very young with my aunt. Now, she was the one who got me in, who would love watching the Next Generation and Quantum Leap. Yeah, and I I have because my um my mom had me a bit young, so this was her younger sister watching me, so she was a teenager, and you know I would often get watched by her, and I she instilled in me a love for these like procedural sci-fi shows from like the age of like four and five, and I remember watching. I rem I have the vaguest memory of her being super upset when Quantum Leap got canceled. <laughs> A lot of people were. He never oh, got yeah. home. He never got home. No, nope. <laughs> still isn't home. Spoiler from the new reboot, remake, <laughs> but continuation series. I just, I was not really a Deep Space Nine person because I was just too young. Yeah, I wasn't a Deep Space Nine person because <gasps> that show sucked. Ooh. <gasps> Ooh. <laughs> I told you we were going to butt heads here. <laughs> you know I, me. <laughs> I thought it was going to get contentious when we started talking about the new shit. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, I, I start early. Can, mm. can we just go ahead and dive into the, into the, to the battle here? You guys want to, you want to engage? One moment. One moment. Okay. <laughs> I, I have Chills a, up, Matt. Chills up. I have a snippet that I would like to play. What okay. I think is. Red fucking it, alert. <laughs> it, it's a clip. <laughs> It's not his whole speech because like two minutes and I don't want us to get flagged or something. But it's the part where I realized that I loved Cisco because at first for several seasons, I thought Cisco was a bit of a wuss. But Me then too. he gives this speech and there's a snippet of it. And if I had to do it all over again, I would. Garrick was right about one thing. A guilty conscience is a small price to pay for the safety of the alpha quadrant my mm. man said you can have a little war crime as a treat <laughs> all right can i can yeah I go for quantify it. can i quantify my statement <laughs> yeah, yeah oh yeah. go for it go for it <laughs> now i have to say i have over the years gone back and re-watched a lot of ds9 episodes because i'm like that's not fair for me to just come at it like that and i will say that I entered that series when it first premiered pretty prejudiced of it because I, my immediate reaction is this is stupid. It's a stationary. <laughs> yeah. They're not trekking or trekking. Yeah. How is this trek? Yeah. You're not trekking anywhere. And the first few episodes I thought, yeah, this is exactly what I thought it was going to be. It's a story about a space station and then they're going to invent problems 
that can happen on this space station. Now, I will give it credit that over time, they did start doing some really good um, character development. They did have some good uh, conflicts. But overall, in the overall Shrek sphere of things, their conflicts, to me, they just weren't... It, 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 that show just never did it for me. And it really was because of the whole, like you said, Matt, there's no trek yeah. there. It's just what would happen at a bus stop? You know, what's the worst <laughs> thing that could happen at a bus stop is how I felt. I've always felt about that show. But the thing I love about it, there's a couple of things that I love about that. And I think one of them is because you're on the space station and you can do this a little bit with TNG two or Voyager but you can have all of these different secondary characters who are coming in and out and getting their own development because, you know, they're not part of the crew. They're not even maybe even on the Mm. space station. Right. But because this is a stationary place that people come to, they can show up, they can have stories and they can leave as opposed to TNG, which I love is a show where it's like the enterprise goes to a place. They solve a problem with the guests of the week and then they leave which is great. I love it. But it's a different kind of thing that TNG couldn't do. And the other thing I love about the show is like next generation takes Star Trek and is like, you know, the Federation is great. They are the ideal of, you know, society of civilization with the, the best of humanity, um, striving to be better always. And then D space nine, is not not about that but it's also like we're setting it on the fringes we have a lot of people who are not in that sphere and we're sort of asking okay what does it look like to them what does it take what what does it take to maintain that kind of society is it good i mean ultimately because that's star trek it lands on yes it is but you have episodes like there's a two-parter in the middle of the series where you know they're on earth and there's like the threat of basically terrorism and the idea is that they have to lock it down. And it's like, well, what, what does it take to maintain what is essentially a paradise? Right. And those are like really interesting, crunchy topics and really analyzing like how the world works, the universe works in a way that TNG, you know, just never did because that wasn't the kind of show it was. So just like, it's a, it's a show I can just really sink my fucking teeth into and I love it. And I can appreciate that perspective too. I mean, and like I said, over time, the character, the character development did get a lot better in my opinion. Um, but for me, I just, I'm sorry. I, I know it's a, it's a, it's a, uh, the old school, I have a problem budging from, to seek out new life <laughs> yeah. and new civilizations. You're yeah. not seeking anything out in a space station. Like I said, it's what can happen at a bus stop. <laughs> so a lot. You can find a war at a bus stop. <laughs> well, apparently. <laughs> For me, um, my comfort show is The Next Generation. Oh, yeah. But I think yeah. in terms of what was is the best Star Trek that was ever made, it would have to be when – once Worf shows up to Deep Space Nine, so it's like seasons four through six, the tight, concise, they really want to focus on the Dominion War. I have an opinion about that. (laughs) (laughs) But go ahead, go ahead. I'm sorry, go ahead, go ahead. But my problem with Deep Space Nine is the first 15 episodes of the last season of season seven are all filler. They... um. Dax has left because Dax died, so they had to introduce Ezra Dax instead of uh, J- uh, Jazia Dax, or um, and they have to introduce her, and they have to figure out what to do because they've written the ten episodes of the end of the Dominion War, which are should have been released as a three part mo- epic movie, Lord of the Rings thing, because you know you have ten episodes, about forty eight minutes each. You can do three three hour movies in that, and a trilogy of beauty. But for in the middle of a war, they stop to play baseball against the Vulcans. <laughs> and mind you, that is that is an amazing episode. <laughs> Doesn't make sense. <laughs> the thing about that last season is, and it's so interesting, is that because 
okay, if, if that was a normal season, right? You would get every single one of those 15 episodes. They would just be interspersed throughout the season, right? Where like, you know, this week we're doing the baseball episode and next week it's going to be about Esri. And then, then the episode after that is about, you know, a war, a war episode. But because they decided, okay, we're going to backload the, the season with the finale stuff, a big 10 episode sprint, then all the stuff, good or bad, that would have been just like sprinkled throughout is suddenly the front of the season. So like half of the season, you're like, this isn't bad, but like you guys have like other stuff going on, right? <laughs> on top of introducing a new character, like you said. Yeah. When I rewatched that show, that, that, that show, I typically, I will hit the Dominion episodes of like one, two, and three episodes, seasons one, two, and three, which was not a great many of them in that first part. There's some filler stuff about, you know, with Cisco and what's going on there and some teasing. But once Worf lands in and they've solidified their cast, I just watch four through six straight and then I just jump to the last 10. Leo's, Leo's, yeah, he's chuckling and every time he mentioned Worf, so... <laughs> <laughs> so I have to preface this by saying I have a friend who is a much better, uh, uh, not much better, but a huger fan than I am. And he's also a collector. So he has all kinds of things all across the Star Trek universe. For the love of God, he has an owner's manual to <laughs> the Star Trek Enterprise yes. from Deep Space, or from um, <clears throat> Next Generation. He's and this thing is, Quest. <laughs> have you ever seen these things? Oh, yeah. They're oh, yeah. like yeah, thousands of pages long, detailed diagram, whatever. But um, he and I got into uh, an argument one time because I said to him when they introduced Worf on Deep Space Nine, that was when they admitted they knew the show was faltering. <gasps> we have to bring in some fire. We got to bring something into this show to make people come back to watch it more. <laughs> Yeah, that face you're making right now was exactly the same face he made. And that was a long night and a long <laughs> conversation. It might, it's about to be a long night now. I mean, I just was like, you know, yes. And 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 all of that, the once they introduced him, yes, I agree with you. It started, I that's that's about when I say it, it started getting a lot better for me. But I just I always felt that show, it was Again, I I keep trying to revisit them. I revisit them from time to time now, even now, um, because they show them on, uh, what's it called, H&M. Yeah. And some of the episodes, I'm like, I don't know why anyone would watch this. But there are others where I'm like, okay, yeah, I this is, again, this is where I was. Because there did come a time, guys, when I just gave up on Deep Space, uh, Deep Space Nine when it was originally airing. I'm like, I just can't do this. This show just doesn't do it for me as a star trek I, installment you know i think there's there's probably not you know we were we were aghast i think rightly so but i don't think there's nothing to that right we're like you know i think it's only recently that in the wider culture not i mean i don't think it's still a very well-known show but i think i think the space nine was a black sheep of the series for or the franchise for a long time because some of the stuff you said were like, it's not on a spaceship. Why wouldn't it be on a spaceship? It's Star Trek. And just like TNG was on and then Voyager was on after that. And they're both about ships. And, you know, I think there's probably something to the idea that some people just didn't jive with the cast or the politics of it or whatever. And it was kind of like what you said about when you were a kid and you were looking at Star Trek and you were like, why aren't you pulling out your laser guns? Yeah, why aren't right. you doing this? It was the same thing for me with Deep Space Nine. It's like, when are you guys going to go anywhere? Why are you just sitting here? Why are why are all the stories occurring in this one space station? Yeah, I, right. I mean, to me, it's that same logic. Like, this doesn't make any sense for this story, yeah. for this franchise, where everything's just happening. Again, I hate to keep saying it, at the bus stop. <laughs> <laughs> so, for me, I started kind of fading in my interest of Star Trek. So, you know, watching a Voyager and Voyager for what it was trying to do, I thought did well. And I remember I was 15 or 16. I watched the first episode of Enterprise and I realized it wasn't for me. 
and Enterprise I, wasn't that good. Well, be, and I can tell Enterprise. you the exact moment. <laughs> I'm sitting on the couch with my girlfriend watching Enterprise, the first episode of Enterprise. And for some reason, they have to have the hot Vulcan lady go through decontamination and cover her boobs. That's yeah. a weird, yeah. that's a yeah, weird that, moment. They, 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 it's like they were at that point, you realize they were trying too hard. I mean, even horned up me, who's just like, I watch Voyager, you know, uh, I, I watch a Voyager for seven of mine, which is like, this is pandering. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Th- but you know, you, 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 and I think you were smart enough to know that. Yeah, that scene, that whole thing, that was just. Yeah, mm. we know this isn't that great, but here's some almost boobs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it was the style at the time too. It was like what the yeah. year two thousand, two thousand one, two thousand one. Like, yeah, that's just. I think you you find any network TV show at that time. We're getting sexier. There's probably yeah, yeah some scene yeah. where like someone is taking a shower, or you might see yeah. like the top of her butt, or yeah. you know whatever. Else. Right. Or the halfway. We're we're in bed together. Yeah. And you can see our shoulders. Yeah, the side yeah. boob or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> I think Enterprise is like better than its reputation. I think it's not a bad show, but it is like it is the weakest of like yeah. the quote unquote golden era of Star Trek. But yeah. you know, I watched it probably just a few years ago and i was like oh this is like not this is not bad i was expecting like pure dog shit and i don't think it is that you know yeah it was all right (laughs) (laughs) it was all right it's true star trek went fallow for a few years we didn't get a movie from 2002 till 2009 We, we didn't have any shows except for enterprise which got was the first star trek show since the original to get canceled and then we got introduced to what i call the jj abrams verse and i will let you guys know Mm -hmm. uh, well i feel like we're gonna we're gonna be together on this part i have a snippet for what i feel about the the abrams verse it's a fake (laughs) (laughs) i hated it that Bruh. first movie, all my friends were coming, were like, oh my gosh, it's so good. And all I could think of was, can you tell me why? <laughs> the movie needed us to have James T. Kirk, one, explain how he passed the test. But two, this is the part that I'm focused on. Are you telling me that our Kirk took control of the Enterprise by berating his commander into attacking him, mm. by mocking him, and then he drops into the seat and everyone's just like, yeah, this is right. This is good. Yeah. We, we just, yeah, totally makes sense. And just throw in a bunch of shaky camera, shaky camera. Insubordination <laughs> is how we do captains here. Yep. <laughs> totally. In this utopian society. It's an alternate universe. And this, this now, alternate universe uh, is how they do it. <laughs> slow down, Matt. Slow down. Cause I am definitely going to get to that part. Now, <laughs> I will say, I will give the movie some kudos for now, Alex, you didn't like that he explained that. I kind of liked it. I kind of liked that he explained that he cheated. Okay, that's fine. I, mean, I like we all that kind of We all kind of knew he cheated. Yeah, I knew that. I thought it was a cute touch. I did like uh, the Chris Pine casting. I think he did a phenomenal it's a, it's job. It's a solid cast, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah he the cast is phenom- great. Yeah, the cast in general is great. Um. <sighs> But where it started to fall apart for me is what you said. The J, the, uh, what did you call it? The J.J. Abrams Abrams verse. The J.J. Abrams feel of it. It was like, you guys are trying to make this movie too pretty. It's Mm -hmm. too, it was, yeah, there was just too much. And like I said, the shaky camera. And then we're trying to make, yeah, Kirk over this over the top bombastic egotistical we he was already that we knew that but he didn't show it that way originally right yeah that was not kirk he was let's just let's just put it this way kirk was a player yeah. he was a hustler he but he carried himself that way he didn't have to really kirk resisted arguments if you look at the original uh original series he did his best to reason with people it was only when things start ramping up was when he was like okay okay well you want to go ahead let's fight like he resisted it but in this star trek it was like he was just this arrogant jerk who was looking for a fight 
And like yeah. you said, he's looking to engage with his commanding officers and take over. That wasn't Kurt. Yeah, he, had, he didn't have a strong father figure like he did in the original yeah. series because it's an alternate universe where his dad died. <laughs> okay. Do you want to just go ahead and talk about this alternate universe? Let's let Alex continue right, first. I'll, 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 I'll say one thing. One thing. That is such an... It, I have some affection for those movies for what they are. That was a time... I saw that movie in theaters. I probably saw it with Josh, actually. And mm-hmm. I, I, I saw that and I was like, maybe I do kind of like Star Trek. And then I, <laughs> and then I went oh, home. Oh, was that? And then That's I, well, what the... Here's the thing. Oh. Then I went home and threw on an episode of original series because that was like netflix was doing its streaming thing by then and i was like maybe i don't like star trek (laughs) oh my gosh (laughs) my my defense of that is okay the cast the cast works but perfectly yeah if 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 they had introduced the, the that cast with star trek beyond i would be content as can be yeah star trek beyond is beyond yeah it's so good. <laughs> it's the best of those movies. Yeah. It captures the yeah, lonely. I'll I mean, agree with you guys on that. The, the beginning part where, you know, the, um, where the whole, you know, the fake out that they're actually really tiny when you, it's, you know, in the room, that was great. But I will say what I felt like I was watching Star Trek is that monologue right after that, that monologue he gives, we're talking about how we've been out in space and it's lonely yeah. and we're just vast and we're just plugging away and the drudgery. I'm like, that to me felt like the next generation. It felt like some of Deep Space Nine and Voyager where it's just like, we're doing our job. Dear God, what is coming? And then all of a sudden, you know, it starts going through its thing and it felt, I mean, yeah, they crashed the goddamn Enterprise for the 95th time in 12 movies. <laughs> that it was a bit yeah. over the top. But it, <laughs> but it was, so it was, good. it was well done. But um, yeah. I'll tell you where I fell off with yeah. that whole series of movies is the same reason why I fall off with a lot of movies lately and where I am really getting <sighs> fatigued with the whole um, Marvel universe and now even the DC universe is I love that they tried to say, we need to bring Leonard Nimoy in this. Mm. We need to bring back the original Scott or uh, Spock. How do we do that? Alternate universe. Multiverse. Multiverse. For me, you guys, I, I cannot stand multiverse. Today, right now, today, I am going to launch a protest against any more <laughs> multiverse writing. Because to me, to just throw multiverse, at it, that's just like a writer's crutch. Yeah. It's like... How do you explain away the inconsistencies in logic, physics, and time? Oh, don't worry about it. It's multiverse. Don't worry. It's just a, this is a whole different universe. That's not even this. That's not even really Kirk, but it's Kirk, but it's from a different. I was so disappointed with that explanation as to how Spock ended up meeting Spock. <laughs> I do think in this case, it is kind of an elegant solution, right? Because and this is obviously this movie comes out in 2009 before our current period where like everything is a multiverse, right? Like now, if they put out that movie now, it would just feel like another, another. In a no, even then I was like, I was disappointed. That's fair. But at the time, at least for me, and this is me seeing it not as like a, a hardcore Star Trek fan where like, I thought it was clever just because, Oh, well, we're, they're not re they're rebooting the series but they're doing it in such a way that says all the other stuff that you love is still there. We're not erasing that. Right. Um, So I always appreciated it in that way. And now as we've gone back to TV with the new Star Trek stuff, that is decidedly not in that quote unquote alternate universe. Now, you know, three of these movies, they were okay to bad. One of them was pretty good. We, they can just be safely ignored, right? Where it's like, we have this we have this sort of like little cul-de-sac of a thing we tried when Star Trek was kind of in a, like you said, a fallow period. And now we've left that behind. So it's just over here. And because of the way we did it, we don't have to like reckon with how to reconcile Chris Pine Kirk with William Shatner Kirk, right? 
So I think it, I, I think ultimately it worked out for the best in that way. My problem with that though is that they originally marketed it as this is the story before the story. Sure. You know. This is young Kirk. This is young crew. This is young everyone. This is the beginning, beginning. And they were they did fine with that up until they said, we're going to bring in old Spock. Right. How do we explain that? And then that's when they threw in multiverse. And that's when they lost me. They were doing fine up until that point, in my opinion. Sure. You were telling a story and, you know, <laughs> on the last episode that I was on, I told you, I love prequels to a point. <laughs> like if you tell a good prequel story, it makes sense to me, yeah. and especially if you do it right. And they did do it right at first. But then to say, oh, never mind multiverse. To me, <laughs> it's just like you just, you reached a block because you knew you wrote yourself into a corner when you introduced the old Spock to the new Spock. Your only explanation is multiverse. Sure. I don't yeah. like that. Yeah. So we're now in the longest period since 1979 where we haven't had a star trek movie there was a gap between nemesis in 2002 to star trek in 2009 and now the 2016 uh beyond to now it's been another seven years it looking like at least another year or two before they try to get out a movie which we don't know what that movie is going to be um some say it's going to be star trek 4 there's been rumors of uh the same cast coming back but also including um, chris hemsworth as james t kirk's dad because he had a cameo as his dad in the 2009 movie which yes that's so weird to think about yeah. he's james <laughs> i was just about to say that yeah because yeah. yeah, i remember watching that and, and i of course i had no idea who Chris hensworth was yet because he wasn't thor and there's this very you know he's attractive and he's <laughs> lanky and he's running down those halls and he seems to be like be as tall the damn halls he's running down you know because he's a big guy <laughs> right He's a big piece of man candy. Yeah. <laughs> we, or, or they might do something completely different. But some say we're back to the good old days of having some good eating with Star Trek shows. Some say maybe not. But we have now the Paramount verse, where we have Discovery uh, about to start its fifth season. We have Picard, which just ended after three seasons, Lower Decks, an animated series, Prodigy, an animated series. And Strange New Worlds, a true prequel <laughs> to Star Trek, the original series. Which at, anytime you throw Pike, yeah. Which yeah. at this point, but by the time this comes out, where we're recording, it's just about to start its second season. But by the time you're hearing it, it's probably at least a couple episodes underway. Yeah. And it rules. Strange New Worlds rules. I will say I've been satisfied overall, except for... <laughs> and Matt has already yelled at me about this before. Lower decks. Oh, just oh, just you're not a fan it. of it. That's okay. You just know. couldn't do it. Just couldn't do it. I tried. <laughs> I and it didn't take long for me. I think I may have watched only three episodes because for me it was like if I wanted to watch Rick and Morty, <laughs> I would watch Rick and Morty. <laughs> That was it, period. The animation style just threw me completely off. I'm like, no, no, see, this isn't I, Star Trek. See, I'm with you because like my some of my friends keep telling me they love Bob's Burgers, but I hate the animation style so much I can't. Oh, my it. gosh. If I wanted to watch The Simpsons for the million times, I would watch The Simpsons. <laughs> like, the, yeah, it's I, that, yeah. Like, I don't understand why Bob's Burgers is chose an animation style me. that is so ugly. It was and, fine when it was new, but it's just been done to death. Yeah. That's the problem. But I, but Matt, you love Lower Decks, right? Because I have friends who hate the uh, Abrams st uh, stuff, and they're like, Lower Decks is the best thing since you know Next it, Generation. Get yeah. away from them. They are not your friends. <laughs> they it, don't have your best interests in mind. <laughs> <laughs> it honestly baffles me that Josh has watched Lower Decks and loves it. Not because not because I think it's a bad show that you can't watch if you're not familiar with Star Trek, but it's just a show that like me watching as someone who has seen so much Star Trek is like there are so many things in there where I'm like, oh, I get that because I've seen the episode where Picard, you know, debates the woman who says she's Satan for I've seen that episode five times or whatever. You know, Josh has I'm gonna guess has not seen that episode. 
But anyway, yeah, I think Lower Decks is great. You know, I can see why it's not everyone's cup of tea. I think for me, the thing that I worried about when they announced it, because the guy who created it, Mike McMahon, he did write for Rick and Morty, and it's got a similar animation style. So I think when that was announced, I was like, ah, man, I don't know. If, is it just going to be Rick and Morty Star Trek, or is it going to be like, look how silly and dumb and stupid and idiotic this all is? And I think it does kind of, sometimes you get that vibe, but for me, watching it, it, it just something where if I can feel like the people who are making it, I can feel their appreciation and their love for Star Trek. Like, even if it's a plot that kind of pokes fun at Star Trek, like there's an episode where they go back to the computer that Kirk beat by making it logic itself into oblivion. And all the people does not compute. Yeah. Does right. Not compute. And and it's kind of a thing where they're making fun of that episode, but in a way that's like, Oh, we love this though. Like we're making fun of it because we love it. And it, the, the knowledge is so deep where like, I don't know. I, it's a show that I love. I don't know if it's necessarily among the best of those new shows, but I think a lot of it is also, I think so much of it being about feeling that appreciation for that golden area of Star Trek goes a long way for me. I think at this point we could also make a call back to the original animated series that we were talking about and how bad it is. And I can say, I can admit that part of the problem for me is the same problem that I had with the original animated series is that I don't feel Star Trek should be animated. It's a real, it's a real show. Sure. It deserves real people, real, quote unquote, real aliens. You know, it's a yeah. natural show. When it's animated, it just doesn't make sense, regardless of what kind of a, a incantation of the animation you're doing. It could be a completely different show, a completely different storyline like Lower Decks, but it being animated, again, it gives me that feeling of this isn't Star Trek. This is a cartoon about something that's related to Star Trek, but it's not Star Trek. Mm -hmm. So when I want to watch Star Trek, I want to see real. I don't sure. want to see animation. So, and I will say that I probably walked into it with that bias <laughs> and I, and I was immediately turned off when I saw the animation style and I'm like, that just reinforced that bias. It's like, I will not like this. And I try and I'm like, no, it's exactly what I thought it was going to be. And I don't like it. So, uh, of the Paramount stuff, which do you think is the best show? Matt, you go first. I'm going to say Stranger Worlds hand down, hands down, like. Even after uh, one, se even though we only have one season of it, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and here's why, and Alex, I know that you in the past have mentioned you're not super into some of the new shows. I think Discovery and Picard, especially. Yeah. Um, and I can see why that rubs people the wrong way. Strange New Worlds is the show that is like that is the Star Trek show that people have been like wanting since Discovery started. Right? It's a it is an episodic show where every week we are having an adventure. The Enterprise is going to a place or something is coming to the Enterprise. Something's going to happen. We're solving a problem in 55 minutes and then we zip off to the next episode. There's 10 episodes of the first season. There's an episode that kind of is a riff on like a horror episode. There's like a, a fantasy episode. There's a, a body swap episode. There's some time travel hijinks, like the amount of things that it gets through in its first season is amazing. The cast is killer. It's just like, it's the kind of, I think the, the kind of Star Trek show that people wanted when they started making new shows. And it's just, it's great. And I will agree with you, Matt, especially yeah. when it comes to Pike himself. I was glad to see that they were consistent with, who's playing Pike. I'm glad that, you know, the casting didn't change because remember Pike was on discovery. Yeah. And about a year or two ago, if you had to ask me this question, I would have said discovery. And for one reason and one reason only, and that's captain <laughs> Philippe Giorgio. <laughs> um, I 
loved her. <laughs> like her ruthlessness, the whole, the way that entire storyline unfolded, um, everything about that show was perfect. I said the exact same things you just said, Matt. This was a Star Trek that I think a lot of Trek fans were waiting for, even though a lot of fans I talked to were like, no. <laughs> but I'm like, because eh. a lot of them didn't like the way it was shot. And I can appreciate that. A lot of the cinematography threw a lot of people off. They're like, this is too... Or a lot of the technology, they were like, if this was before Enterprise, how could they have blank? Right. And I, I appreciated that. I'm like, well, you know, that's fine. But if I were to pick a favorite now, I think I have to agree with Matt. I've, I love Picard, even though a lot of Picard slowed down way too much for me, especially when we got bogged down with the Borg Queen. I started getting bored with her. I'm like, could they just kill her and let's move on to something else? <laughs> but then we find out in the end, well, we couldn't kill her because of who she really, you know, who she turned out to be. That's right. But of the new shows, I yeah, Matt, I, I think I'm going to have to agree with you. Strange New Worlds. So, you know, so far I'm, I'm really digging it. And yeah. could it be the newness of it, though? Because like I said, I said the same thing about Discovery when it first started, so... Maybe, but you know, they're doing a good job so far. And I say this as someone who has liked, I've, I keep up with all the shows so far. There's as of, as of now, there's like five of them. Keep up with all of them. I enjoy them all to varying degrees, but there is something about that, that episodic period, uh, you know, the, um, the episodic kind of nature. The episodic, of I, I will say episodic closure. Yeah. Because that's Star Trek. Like you said, they they encounter a problem. They get they have to fight the problem. And then there's closure by the end of the episode. Yeah, Sometimes you get two or three episodes out of that. But you know, it's coming. Yeah. <laughs> now they're stretching it out to 10 to 20. But hey. Right. hey. <laughs> that's, well, that's a thing that I think feels very Star Trek. And I appreciate that, like, the thing about this. I've, I've always liked Discovery. But, you know, one of the things that I've always kind of wished is that it could just sprinkle in just a little more of that episodic thing. Like, I know we've always got a big season yeah. long story. Just like, just give me an episode where in the midst of that, we're going off to solve a problem that is solved by the end, right? So like, it's always one of those things that I've wanted out of the new shows. And, you know, that, that that's not enough to make a show good. Like, it could be a, a procedural that's dog shit, right? Like, it if it was bad, then that would be one thing. But I think because the cast is so good and because they have a mind towards writing these episodes well, maybe because they have so few episodes, it's only 10 episodes a season, um, I think it is not just that it's new. I think that it, there, it's finding a way to recapture something about what I really love about Star Trek that maybe the other shows haven't quite gotten even if they're shows that i quite like you know i think that i think the problem with the episodic closure that you're talking about is people's viewing habits yeah they have to stretch these stories out into entire seasons because this is the way people are watching tv now the way people stream the way people binge if you have episodic closure for every star trek episode some people would be put off yeah and it it really is. I think it's not necessarily a ding on Star Trek or how it's written. It's more of a. It kind of sheds more of a light on the way people view things nowadays. Yeah, TV's just made differently now, and that's yeah, why TV's made differently. Yeah, that's yeah. why Discovery and Picard are what they are. Even though you know, I think I have my issues. You could. I'm sorry, I need to cut you off. I was. Just I say, could. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I, I was in the middle of season two of Picard and I was thinking you could wrap this whole thing up right now, Yeah, <laughs> but they couldn't because they had to keep making those episodes. Yeah. And I think I have some issues with some, some related to that same issue of the first couple seasons of Picard, but, but you know, I do, I think they kind of brought it back for season three and some of that was, it, it was still one long story, but you know, we're focusing in on the characters we love um, by bringing the TNG crew back. And they have occasionally sprinkled in something resembling that episodic nature into that third season where, you know, 
we are always on the ship. We're always trying to solve this larger issue. But there's an episode in there where it's like, oh, we're stuck in a nebula and the power's out. How do we solve that? By the end of the episode, <laughs> right. by the end of the episode, we fixed it. And then we're still working on the story. But there is some of that thing where you can you can kind of watch this part of the, the story in its own little chunk, if that makes sense. All right. Well, we've caught up to Star Trek. So I think it's time that we say our goodbyes. So I will thank you. Know, I'll ask you to follow Talking Smack Pod. That's our Twitter. You can join our dis- our Discord at tsmackpod at gmail.com. Thank you to Leo Allen, the Leo Allen, for our musical themes. Leo, where can yes, we follow yeah, you? Yeah. <laughs> hey, I'm not really active on social media that much anymore. I kind of dipped out. Uh, I had to voluntary input has been on uh, a bit of a hiatus. Will it come back? Uh, I keep getting asked that question. Who knows what the future holds, but you know, life kind of got in the way and that's yeah. the explanation of that. But, um, you know, I'm out and about. You can but jump on the Talking Smack Discord because we have a lot of fun there. Get that's there. what I'll say. Get in there. I'm there on the Talking Smack Discord. <laughs> it's, it's a good time. It's a good time. I spend eight uh, hours a day on that Discord. Don't tell the boss. <laughs> Sometimes it's hard to keep up with because yeah. it's like, oh, my gosh, I got to say what. <laughs> I got to talk about what Matt just posted. <laughs> It's. I think it's more active than if you're on Twitter or whatever. Get off of that. Just <laughs> get on the Talking Smack Discord. You'll have a lot more fun. All of your friends are there anyway. Uh, also, to to stay creatively busy, I've you know I've always worked on music. Uh, yeah. I just released an album actually, and it oh. might not be the kind of music that a lot of people like. It's uh, some electronic uh, chill. They call it chill. Is the big thing. Uh, not really ambient but it's also classified like that it's on spotify now just released it's also on apple music but just look for profound simplicity and the album is called uh intentionally so just look for that and that's pretty much what i've been up to lately so i'm looking it up on my spotify right now you can't miss it it's a dark black album cover because i like to be ominous <laughs> i decided to click and give you a follow <laughs> thanks i really appreciate it and uh you know you can also purchase it too because all <laughs> yeah money's important but uh anyway as far as part uh podcasting goes um i'm not gonna say too much like i said <laughs> who knows what the future holds things are always in the works so yeah. and i want to thank you guys for having me on of course I was happy to talk with you. I knew I had to after listening to that uh, the franchise fatigue episode. Matt, thank you for joining. Yes, I'm always happy to be here. Can I ask you one question? Oh, of course. Are you going to watch Strange New Worlds? Yeah, actually, I am. Okay, good. Okay, did you watch Andor like we told you to? No, okay, I'm backlogged. Okay. I'm, I'm in okay. my my yearly every year. Some for some reason. At some point in the year, normally around June, I start rewatching the Matrix franchise. <laughs> I don't know why. Either. That's all right. I don't know why either. It just it's shut. <laughs> <laughs> we were leaving this. All right. And uh, thank you to Beppo and Retro L Studios for Avatars. Please subscribe, rate, and review. And I would like to thank you all for listening. I forgot to click the outro music, so we have to fill for like at least 30 seconds. <laughs> Hey, if you want me to come back and talk about the Matrix, we can do that too. Yeah, because the first, the first one is the only one that matters, and that's all I'm going to say to that. (laughs) Oh, oh, Mm. Mm. (laughs) you know what? You know what I'd say to you, Leo? Free your mind. (laughs) And the rest will follow. (laughs) Man, Mm. what did I tell you before, Matt? A good story only needs to be told once. Yeah, that's why they do a different one in the sequels. <laughs> All right. I will say this, Leo Allen, because this is my shtick. This week, your lovely outro music was remixed by Slipknot. <laughs> I had to come up with a band, and I like Slipknot. <laughs> okay. You can hear the drums in the background if you listen right about now. There it is. <laughs> I have never listened to Slipknot. <laughs> So I'll just say, okay. <laughs> I'm not going to let you stop me from doing it again, Alex. I was expecting you to do it over this part. Alex. 
watch Star Trek. That's me on that grind right there, by the way. <laughs> no, it really is. Oh, I believe you. Ta-da! Sebastian, the whale washing dolphin. Live long and prosper, Mr. Warren. <laughs> you also live and... Just, just go you watch it right now. Out. Go watch it right now. You can now. cut that out. I was just being goofy. <laughs> I know, it's totally fine. No, I didn't get a reference something. But there's a Star Trek song that was like popular like 12 years ago that I used to listen sh- nonstop over and over when I was working like these 12, 15 hour shifts at work for overtime because they opened up like unlimited overtime. Have you guys heard this? Here's to the finest yeah. crew in Starfleet. Oh, yeah. Engage. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I- I legit yeah, listened I, to that like we're, we're listening to it for twelve <laughs> hours straight <laughs> on loop. On really? YouTube. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can't okay. do that anymore. I like it was you know the whole like in the twenties just working. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. But watch anyways, Star Trek. yeah, gotta watch Star Trek. We gotta abandon the room because Josh needs it for his uh, primal beast star whatever the new transformers. Oh true. no, we can. Mm. We're going another hour. Tell me. <laughs> <laughs> 